Hello, I'd like to welcome you to Cooking With Peng TV in Max Kitchen. I'd like to say a big thank you to all viewers and all the people that subscribed to our last series where I showed you how to cook jerk chicken. And for today's menu, I'm going to show you how to cook plum cheesecake crumble and Jamaican hardo bread. You've got to be cleansy and hygienic. So, we wash our hands. If you don't wash your hands, the bacteria sticks to the back of your hands, the front of your hands, underneath your nails. So do give your hands a thorough wash. Okay, hands clean, nice and clean and fresh. First things first, we're gonna start off with the plum crumble cheesecake. I have two different types of plums. Yellow plum, sweet, juicy. Red plum, half ripe, add acidity. Next, one large mixing bowl. Brown sugar, condensed milk, plain or self raisin flour, butter. Chocolate digested biscuits. Soft cheese, mascarpone cheese, Philadelphia cheese, any sort like that. Your weighing scales, mixer or whisk, cheesecake crumble. Our plum cheesecake crumble. Container. Mascarpone into container. Once you've added the mascarpone, condensed milk. So we have, right here we have the mascarpone and condensed milk. We are going to now add two and a half tablespoons of vanilla essence. Now we are going to place into a mixer. Okay, done. You're looking for this type of texture. Nice, thick and smooth. Now we're going to add the juice of a lemon. If you've got a lemon juicer, you could use it. I prefer to just do it the old school way. Hold out my hand, catch the seeds. And just let the juice, just hold your hand out, it's simple. Just let the juice run through your fingers. And you'll catch all the seeds. Give it a nice stir, just blend that in, if you can see it's, it's, it's a runny texture but thick runny, so we blend that in. Now we're going to move on to our next part of this ingredients, the digestive biscuits. We have one pot, four spoonfuls of margarine, one, heapfuls, heapfuls just like this, two, three, four, margarine. We need to crush our digestive biscuits. 
two ways you can do this. Throw them in a the blender and blitz them. Or you can just do it the old school way I do. Put them in a carrier bag. A clean carrier bag, mind you. Get out my old hammer. And give them a good beating. Okay, should be done nicely. This is what you want. Nice and crushed. We're over at the fireplace now, where we have our margarine. Once your margarine is melted, reduce your fire and add your broken biscuits. Okay, here we have our broken digestives. Now, we reduce the fire on the, butt, the margarine. Add digestives. Try not to make a mess. <laughs> Fold digestives into butter. Leave to brown. While our biscuits and the margarine are on the fire browning, you can use this time to head back over to your plums. First, wash your plums. Now, we cut plums, deceive them. Because the plums are going inside the put you don't have to really be pretty, you can just give it large chunks, small chunks, however you like. Just try not to get no bad bits in there. Just get a nice even amount of that. So you get the colours, the vib such vibrant colours and nice flavour. So you get the red and the yellows. Now add all your chopped fruit into one pot. Back over to the fireplace. Our biscuits are done now, lovely and brown. While we're over at the fireplace, we'll take the chance to add some vanilla essence into our fruits. 100 mils of water. Some mixed ground spice. And some brown sugar. You don't need a spoon for this, just take a few handfuls and just throw it in. Right, we've thrown our vanilla essence, 100 mils of water, four handfuls of brown sugar on top of our fruits, and we let simmer. Back over to the other side, where we go to bring our done biscuits over and put into a baking tray. Here we have one large silicone baking tray. You can use any type of baking tray, but this is one of mine, and I prefer to use these. 
biscuits, margarine, melted, golden brown. Just add biscuits into baking tray. Spread it around, flatten. Mmm, I love this. You can smell the chocolate you smell from this. I love the chocolate you smell. It's crazy. I could just eat this just like this. <laughs> I'm telling you. If you've never tried, um, if you can make a cheesecake, if you've never tried it with uh, chocolate digestives, dude, I'm telling you, it makes the world of a difference. World of a difference. Nice and flattened. As you can see, I never literally break it down into dust. I broke it down so we still get them nice, beautiful lumps of biscuit, broken biscuit pieces in your mouth when, you, when you're eating this dessert. Now our fruits are softened and they, now they have a new flavor to them. They, the flavors are bonded together with the cinnamon, with the mixed spices, with the vanilla essence and now we have a total new kind of compote so what we're going to do strain this mm, once strained we're going to head back over to the other side of the kitchen we strain our fruits now we add them on top of our biscuit base. Spread evenly on your biscuit base. Add mascarpone. center outwards Now time to make your crumb one bowl flour roughly about two cupfuls of flour margarine roughly two heap spoonfuls that's tablespoons brown sugar four to five handfuls or one and a half cupfuls this part you get dirty this is the time to get dirty get your hands in it and you want to clump all this butter and flour and sugar together as good as you can you could just grab it let it go drop it back down Mix it all in first, kind of, and then keep hand making the same hand gesture. If you want bigger lumps, bigger clumps, bigger clusters, which I normally do, squeeze it and just let it drop. Just break it up, squeeze it, let it drop until you you can basically see the color of the butter actually taking over your flour. It starts to turn yellowy, goldeny. Then we add some mixed spices. Just keep mixing it.
until you have this consistency like a sort of couscous looking consistency and now we add to our cheesecake on top of the mascarpone I normally start from the edges and work my way in but you could do either or either because one thing I hate is when you start from the middle and you get to the edges and you ain't got enough left for the edges so I always get my edges first <laughs> So, and doesn't that look beautiful? Pop this into the oven for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes. I've had the oven preset on Gas Mark 22. I'm going to lower it to Gas Mark 20. 40 minutes is gone and our cheesecake crumble is ready. Nice, golden and brown. The inside is still soft. So we put this aside at room temperature to cool for 20 minutes, then we place it into the fridge and refrigerate for at least an hour before serving. Now, our cheesecake is set. It's been in the fridge. We slice. Yeah, 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 out to Joanna Power on vocals. I'm feeling kinda like I'm always walking on the lonely road. I'm thinking that I might as I try, only lonely knows. Living life wrong instead of thinking where I should have been. Just focusing on money, not on what I could have been. I was in a bad situation, one that I wouldn't leave. Gassed on the roads, almost like I couldn't breathe. When I thought about it, knew I had a second chance. You don't get too many, so you're fucked if you let them pass. It's about time to turn the negative to positive. You're making money on the road, I understand you gotta live. Now, keep focused, just remember what it is you're pushing for. I know the way to go, found the path I was looking for, middle finger up to those who say it's not to be, satin inside me tells me it's got to be, so to all those in doubt, look hard, it's time to see, I'm on a lonely road living life finally. I'm not the only way I know, and it's not easy walking down this road, but though I make mistakes, I'll never change my ways, cause it's the only way that I can do, and nothing's ever gonna bring me down, cause I am always gonna stand my ground, whatever comes to me, Never had the half heart, take a chance, never made me. As I look back on the past, clearly see that made me. And like emergency glass, you ain't ever gonna break me. I take a step forward, then back I take free. When really all along the goal's been to make me. I'll be working in the booth while you're out getting wavy. To those who have judged me, just you wait and see. Here you have it plum crumble cheesecake with two dollops of clotted cream. Now we're moving on to our Jamaican hardo bread. The ingredients we need for this Jamaican hardo bread is 1.7 grams of dried activated yeast, 2 teaspoons of salt, 3 tablespoons of sugar, any sugar, I prefer brown sugar, 350 grams of flour, plain or self-raisin, 
I like to mix my flowers. A teaspoon of vegetable oil and a teaspoon of melted margarine. Melt the margarine. Margarine melted, add yeast. We also need 180 ml of warm water, 45 degrees Celsius preferably. Add yeast. Add salt. Add sugar. Leave until yeast, you get a creamy, let the yeast dissolve and you get a creamy fizzy creamy water, a fluid. You can speed it up by doing this but just leave that to dissolve naturally. We're back. Now our ingredients have combined. We have a murky colored liquid. Now take our flour, gradually add flour to your liquid. Once flour is added to liquid, bring together. Need flour. Add butter. Yeah. Need. Keep kneading. Sprinkle surface with flour. Clean surface, mind you. Flour. And knead. So when you're kneading, if you've never kneaded before, what you're doing, you're actually taking your flour, your dough, folding it, pressing it, folding it, pressing it, folding it, pressing it, folding it, so you're building lots of air inside of, of your dough. Folding it, pressing it, folding it, pressing it. You want to get a nice smooth texture like this.
now. Those rolled. Nice taste, y'all. Fluffy. All you need now is your baking tin. One regular size baking tin. Dress baking tin with flour. Or you could use grease proof paper. You could even use foil. But it's so easy when the bacon, when the flour cooks, it just, uh, it's just cooked flour at the bottom of your pan. And it adds a crust. Bacon tray, floured. Dough. Place dough into baking tray. Spread to each corner. Nice and flat, as level as you can. Dress with oil. Wet, damp, warm kitchen towel. Place over dough. Leave to rise. Anything up to an hour to two hours, leave to rise. Now we've taken our Jamaican hard oil bread loaf out of the oven, which is nice, golden and brown. So hard to rise, so easy to do wrong. 